Hello, I'm Andrew, and thank you for listening to this podcast. And this is actually a re-recording of a live uh, recording that I did where I was answering questions of people with thyroid problems and thyroid questions. Unfortunately, that file became corrupted, so I was unable to do anything with it, and so I have to re-record it. So this will be kind of going through some of the things about my journey through Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And it has been a long and expensive process. So hopefully I can shave off a lot of dollars from your journey and time so that you can just short circuit this and jump right to the reward. And so I'll I'll do that in this video. So the best way that I was able to change all of my symptoms, and there were many, I had fatigue like crazy. Even from a very young age, I was called the fair weather guy. Um, I would only show up to school. That was what my uh, high school teacher referred to me as, the fair weather guy. I was sick all the time. And uh, he seemed to, to notice that I only showed up when the weather was nice, which was mostly true, actually. I had allergies, very severe allergies, and those have been cut down significantly. Uh, my energy levels are extremely high compared to what they were, and they are improving all the time. And I, th I give thanks to all of this. Now, before I get to that, um, let me c cover a few more uh, symptoms that I had. So fatigue was number one. I was extremely sensitive to cold. My feet were cold all the time, and I hated cold weather temperatures. I hated the winter, which is um, really rough. I grew up in the Bay Area, California, so I had lovely weather. And then when I moved to Utah, I hated half of the year because it was cold and I couldn't tolerate it. And then I had multiple digestive issues that fluctuated one way wildly. So it was either too loose or too tight, let's say. I had severe skin conditions, dandruff, all the way to cracked skin, all kinds of things. And um, also what is appearing now, which I, which I jokingly call Rigoletto, but it's a vitil vitiligo. Um, and there's speculation that that is an autoimmune reaction as well. Um, I had kind of inflammation and puffy face um, and just inflammation in all of my joints, which is gone. And I watched a video of me early in my thyroid journey and I had a very puffy face. I don't have that. And my tongue was, was swollen. It was almost like it was too big for my mouth. And then I just had a hoarse voice. I've always had that. It's somewhat better. Um but also muscle weakness. And that was uh, just the worst because people just think you're lazy and you're not. And so you get judged and it's very unfortunate because in my mind and in my heart, I knew that I didn't want to be a lazy, useless person. And yet there I was incapable of exerting myself at all, really, just no endurance and half the time it took you know unless the house was on fire which fortunately it never was but even then you'd if i was in a house that was on fire i'd be weighing my options in bed <laughs> this is all uh, just a um speculative instance my house was never on fire but that's that's kind of the way it was and then you deal with forgetfulness um, there's and I do have a good memory. I rem I have very strong memories and very uh, I can recall things, but when it comes to remembering people's names, for instance, I was awful and it I felt so bad I just couldn't do it. And I would like if I was around people in the neighborhood that I should know, I would just walk by and say, "Hey, how's it going?" I never referred to them by their names. And then once my thyroid issues have been resolved my memory came just flying back. I was able to remember their names and I would just hesitate for a long time calling people by their name because I wasn't sure if it was their right name. And so it was, it was a, it's a very tragic thing on, also, on so many levels. Then there's also uh, insomnia, 
where you might be sleeping a lot and you would wake up and still feel exhausted or you'll go to bed and you'll wake up you know an hour or two later and you can't get back to sleep it's just horrific all around then there's also the whole byproduct of that which is weight gain which can lead to diabetes and all kinds of symptoms that way as well so all across the board it's just a whole nightmare scenario and so what i wanted to talk about was what i did the most now i at first started reading and learning and i learned that i had hashimoto's when somebody sent me a list of symptoms and i checked off pretty much everything on the whole list i said that's me and it, this was a long journey, but I went to a doctor. They prescribed um, some NP thyroid, which is the natural form of thyroid. And I took it, and within days, I literally started having energy. And I literally cried because I thought, this is what normal people feel like. But over time, I had to take more and more, and it seemed to be working less and less. And it was just frustrating because that was the only real solution that doctors were providing. Now, it, there were some things that I started taking, forms of iodine, and I will put links on this on my website page, which is andrewkalina.com, and I'll have some links to some products that I'm referring to. But I started taking iodine and supplements, and some worked and some don't. The one that I found worked the best, uh, that I had the best results with, that I take regularly now, is called Liquid Dulse. It's a natural form of iodine, and I also take... Uh, sea kelp from uh, Iceland, the oceans in Iceland, as a very specific kind that seems to be the cleanest and highest grade because there are different grades. Now, in going through these things, I started making discoveries and realizations about when I would have energy and when I wouldn't. And one of the earliest things that I discovered was when I, when I was in my early 20s, I couldn't get out of bed. And I noticed that if I could if I could get out of bed and use my electric razor to shave, I magically had more energy very quickly. And what I realized was was the ultra high vibrations of the frequency of the of the uh, razor was actually stimulating and my thyroid to excrete whatever hormone was there. Now, I didn't really know what was going on at the time, but it wasn't until much later. But then I, I, when I, once I realized, that, hey, I really think I have a thyroid problem, I went to the doctor, they did the blood tests, checked my T3, T4 levels, my TSH, and they tested to see if I had the Hashimoto's uh, antibody. And all, everything lined up that I had a severe thyroid issue. But, like I said, it didn't solve the problem. Now, what did solve the problem was a massive dietary change. And the best source that I have found, and the best diet that I have found so far, with some slight modifications, was that of Dr. Berg's uh, healthy keto diet, which requires cutting out all sugar, including fruit, and cutting out a very significant amount of carbs to where you're basically, your body is in ketosis. Now, aside from the benefits of losing weight and just having my joints function properly and clarity of mind, my energy levels have gone through the roof and I feel fantastic. My mind is clear and all of this, and I, well, I'll get to exercise in a minute, but all of this cleared up all of these symptoms my tongue isn't swollen my face isn't swollen um i'm i don't get sick like i used to get sick allergies occasionally show up but they're not um uh, they're not as nearly severe as they used to be and so i would recommend that you look at dr berg's keto diet now i'll give you some tips and some some thoughts about what i've done and if you'd like you can follow me on tiktok and on YouTube, and also uh, follow this website. You can join the newsletter. I don't know how often I'll be sending out uh, emails. This is all new. The website's new. 
but I'll be sharing recipes and tips and tricks and things that I've learned. But um, as far as the massive changes was that I, I have a lot more vegetables, a ton of vegetables, and they have to be the right kind. The kind of vegetables that don't spike your insulin or your blood sugar and are very low in carbohydrates. So mostly green, cruciferous vegetables, salads. Um, I cut out every form of milk. I can occasionally have yogurt. I can have butter. I have butter frequently and heavy cream actually is okay because they take out the sugar and the carbs. It's you're basically dealing with the milk fat. And so I've got a lot of recipes that way. Now, one of the, one of the heartbreaking things for most people in the keto diet is they miss sugar. And so I have um, found that the best sweetener that solves my problem is stevia. And so I use a specific brand, which I'll have a link in the um, article on andrewkalina.com of the product that I use. And I also have some recipes uh, that use stevia for sodas and uh, chocolate shakes and even cookies. So I'll be sharing all of those as well. So those are the major things. You got to cut out sugar and cut out uh, milk. So obviously ice cream is gone. But cutting out those alone will, will make a massive change. And so I will be doing more videos in the future. But that is the biggest, uh, the biggest contributing factor to me going entirely off my thyroid prescriptions from the doctor. Now, unfortunately, when I told the doctor what had happened and that I no longer need the um, thyroid hormones, and that it was all because I changed my diet, it was almost as if he couldn't care less, which was very sad because, you know, it, it was a total transformation for me. And, you know, unfortunately, that does not bode well for the medical industry that makes money off of you being sick and trying to treat the symptoms versus the, um, the actual root cause. So that was my experience. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask them here on the website and you can also ask them in the uh, TikTok comment section or on my YouTube. And I will be going through periodically updating this Hashimoto's Q, uh, Q and a and how I cured it. But until then, thanks for watching and have a great day.